Um, so now you have your background information on phosphates and nitrates, you know a little bit about it or you're about to get that information and now you want to know how to do the water quality testing. On um, the day of the water quality test you'll find that your kits are put together in a little carrying case so that you have it. Um, right here this is the nitrates and phosphate kit. It's very important that you take this with you on the day of the field trip. That's one of your responsibilities besides having your safety equipment on is to have this kit along with anything else your instructor might tell you to bring. Um, make sure that you guys have this along with your journals too. Um, this test will take place entirely down by the river. You won't uh, have to bring this back into the lab and, and test your water there. We're back in the lab so that we can have a little bit more controlled environment and you can see what's going on. So once you get to the river and you've got your safety equipment on and you've collected your water sample, um, one of you can be setting up the test kits. Um, one of the things that you'll find inside the test kits are instructions on how to do the test, which is kind of nice. They're laminated, so you need not write down step by step what to do in your journal. That's not necessary because we have these instructions here. And I highly recommend that as you do the test, you go through the instructions step by step, even though you may know how to do it and it's very simple. Still keep that procedure going and follow the procedure as outlined in the instructions so that there aren't any errors or any questions about the validity of our data. Um, we're going to start with the nitrate instructions and how to do that, how to perform the nitrate test. And uh, there is a kit specifically called the nitrate kit. And when you open this up, you'll find all the equipment that you need in order to run that test. And one of the things that you'll notice is I've marked that this is a fragile experiment. It is fragile in the sense that there are these glass ampules that are in the kit. And the glass ampules are little tiny vials that contain specific chemicals needed to run the test. This is a very easy test to do. It used to be a very difficult test to do with a lot of procedures. but. Um, Ward Scientific uh, Supply Company has provided us with an easier form of collecting the data that we need in order to um, get good, simple data that's not difficult to do. Uh, these test kits have been designed so that the chemicals are pre-mixed and it's pretty much a no-brainer, which is nice. You will collect your data, you'll be able to start analyzing your data when you get back to class. So you start out, you open up the container and you see what you got. You have your instructions that you're going to use and you just begin by following through the procedure. And the first thing that you're going to do is once you've watched the videotape is you're going to practice this once in class using water from the fish tank and see how it goes just so that you've run through the experiment and you know what to do so once you get out there there's not a lot of questions. Inside the test kit is a little container that holds the water that you're going to need. And the first thing it says to do is fill the sample cup to the 25 millimeter mark with your collected water sample. So here's my little bottle that I use to collect the water from the river. And there's some real obvious marks on there and I'm going to fill that up to the 25 milliliter mark right exactly to that point. And as you can see, I pretty much nailed it because, you know, I am the science teacher I am. I nailed it right there. I've got 25 milliliters of water in there and I filled it up there. And I'm going to take the contents of one of these foil packs that are in there and it says empty the contents of one foil pack into the sample cup. So this is a nitrate sample foil pack that has some chemicals in it. And I'm going to open this up. And there's a powder in there and you want to get most of it in or all of it in as best you can into that and it's important that you start to time once you put that chemical in. Okay, So once you get this all in you're going to need either a stopwatch or a watch with a second hand on it because you want to have exactly according to the directions three minutes of shaking this vigorously. So you're going to shake this for three minutes solid. And I'm not going to do that on video, but I am going to do it for you. And I'm looking at the clock right now. I'm watching since the time I began to shake it. I have the cap on. I'm supporting the cap with one finger and the bottom with the, my thumb. And I'm just shaking it vigorously. And you got to actually do what it says to do. You know, you got to sit there and shake it vigorously for three minutes. So when I come back, I will have shaken this for three minutes. So we're going to stop the video now while I continue to shake.
Okay, the three minutes is over. And the next thing it says to do is to let it sit for 30 seconds undisturbed. This allows any undissolved particles to settle down into the bottom of the vial. So we'll wait for that to happen. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we're going to take out one of these test ampules. This has the pre-measured chemical in it. It has a very thin tip at the end that's very fragile as well. And the next step is pretty easy. So we're going to let this sit undisturbed for 30 seconds, and it's been 30 seconds. And now we're going to place, open this up carefully. And take the ampule, place the tip of the ampule down inside, and there's a little square plastic in the bottom of this. And what I need to do is I need to break that off. So I put it in there next to it, and I get a little angle on this, and it breaks off, simply breaks off, and it starts to fill up with, with uh, the water from the sample. It goes right into the ampule. None of the chemicals go out, but the water goes in. And you can see that it's turned color already. All right? It says, note a small glass bubble will remain in the ampule to facilitate mixing. So that's what happens. Remove the fluid-filled ampule from the sample cup. Mix the contents of the ampule by inverting it several times. And so that little bubble will help mix it. And as you can see, the color change was almost immediate. All right? Now that we've done that, we wipe all the liquid from the exterior, and we wait 10 minutes. OK? And that's all that you have to do. The test is basically over. You wait 10 minutes exactly and then you're going to make a comparison. One of the things that you can see, and that's kind of what I was afraid of, is that there's a lot of nitrate already present in this sample. That's what we see, okay? Because we have a bright red color. So we've agitated it using the air bubble to mix it, and that's all that you have to do for this test. My only suggestion to you is to do this twice. You're going to take two ampules and run your test through here to make sure that you get the same results. If you don't get the same results, or if your results are not fairly close together, I would like you to run a third ampule through there and then take the two closest for your data. So we'd like you to do this twice. If your two results are close together, there's nothing to worry about. If your results are far apart, you need to note that and run a third test. Okay. Ten minutes has elapsed, and now what we're going to do is we're going to compare our ampule that we tested to our color comparator. And what I basically am doing is just putting it right next to each one, looking where I get my color that matches the most. One of the things that we can see here is my fish tank had a lot of excess nitrogen in it because it's actually higher than the amount that it says is in here. Okay, And what we have to do is we have to look at this, and we have... 5.0 milligrams per liter, or parts per million, of nitrate in here. Okay, But to obtain the milligrams per liter as nitrate, we have to multiply our test results by 4.4. By so I take the 4.4 times 5.0, and I get greater than 22 milligrams per liter for this particular test. Now I'm going to do this at least two times, if not three, to see that my results correspond. And I would make a note in my journal based on this data that there was an excess of that. In other words, it seemed to be greater than the amount because this was off the chart, so to speak, in terms of the amount of um, color we had in the ampule. So that's all there is to do the test. And hopefully when we go down the river, we won't see that we had that much nitrate in it. But I knew my fish tank probably had a lot because the filter mechanism wasn't working. And so there was a lot of excess nitrogen in the water. So there's our test for nitrate. Done once for you, and now you can practice it when you get into the classroom before you go out to the river and then perform it accurately when you get out to the river.